All right, again, we're going over number five now. In order to ensure optimal health and thus accurate test results, the lab technician needs to feed the rabbits a daily <coughs> diet containing a minimum of 24 grams of fat, 36 grams of carbohydrates, and 4 grams of protein. The rabbit should be fed no more than 5 ounces of food a day. Rather than order rabbit food that is custom blended, it is cheaper to order food X and food Y and blend them together for the optimal mix. Uh, food X contains 8 grams of fat, 12 grams of carbohydrates, and 2 grams of protein, and costs 20 cents per ounce. Uh, food Y contains 12 grams of fat, 12 grams of carbohydrates, and 1 gram of protein per ounce, uh, and costs 30 cents per ounce. What is the optimal blend? How do we go about doing this? How do we start this? What's that? X and Y, establish your unknown. So what uh, is my X going to be? What is my Y going to be? What am I trying to do here? and Y together, and we got to order some of each, right, to find the optimal blend. So what is X going to be? What about food X? Very good. Number of ounces of food X that we need to order. So number of ounces of food X, and what would Y be? Number of ounces of food Y. Very good. Number of ounces of food Y. Okay. Step two is what? Objective. What's the objective here? Yes, I want to order certain ounces of X, certain ounces of Y to blend together. And what am I trying to do here? What am I trying to do here for my objective function? Am I trying to maximize or minimize something? What am I trying to do here? Minimize cost. Minimize cost. Optimal blend means cheapest, right? Yeah. Means cheapest in this particular case because I'm looking at cost and everything. I want it cheap. That's why I'm going and blending it myself. So we are dealing with a cost function. And we're going to try to minimize that function. So what is the cost? Total cost. Correct? 0.2x times 0.3y, or 0.20x plus 0.03, or is 0.30y. Now, what's step three? Step three, we need to do what now? constraints that are placed upon that objective function. So what are some of my totals here that are going to allow me to get to this constraint? These constraints, because there's quite a few here. 24 is a total, that's correct. What is that a total of? What is that a total of? Grams of what? Fat. Fat. I need a what? Least that amount, less than that amount, equal to that amount, what do I need for my inequality sign here? At least that amount. At least, so it needs to be what? Greater than, Greater than or equal to 24. Okay, what else? 36. 36. And that's what? Grams of carbohydrates. And I need to have what for my inequality sign? Greater than. Okay, it has to be at least that amount in this blend. And then what else do I have? Four. Four. Which is what? And what do I, I need to have at least that amount, so it needs to be greater than or equal to. Now, what else do I have here for my total? Stated in like, I believe the second, second or third sentence. 
Third sentence right there. Or second, second, second. No more than five ounces per day must be fed, right? And that's a combination of what? X and Y. So five is a total. And it has to be what? Less than or equal to. So now we already determined how to get that less than or equal to five. And what is that? All right, there you go. That's one equation inequality. It's one inequality right there. Now, what about the four? 2x plus 1y, because it's 2 grand, two ounces uh, for every in food x, 1 ounce in uh, food y, and it has to be at least 4 ounces in this blend, right? What about the 36? Exactly. And what about my 24? Are there any other constraints placed upon this? x is greater than or equal to zero, I cannot order or get a negative amount of ounces of food x or y. And that same goes for the y's. I have a restriction on those x's and y's. It's important. Now what we're going to do is plug that into Desmos and figure out where my feasible region lies. Again, I'll move this right now so that we can see this. Get this up real quick. And we'll go through trying to find the feasible reason, region or the solution region to this particular application problem. So now, alright, so we type in our inequalities now. So we have 8x. 8x plus 12y is less than or greater than or equal to 24. We have 12x plus 12y greater than or equal to 36. We have 2x plus 1y is greater than or equal to 4. And we have x plus y is less than or equal to 5. x is greater than or equal to 0. y is greater than or equal to 0. Now, there's a lot going on here. We have to be very cautious with finding this solution region. I would obviously take away all of the shaded regions and go one by one until I find out where. So it's above that line. Now what it is, is it's this and this. And above, we have this now, this, and above. And we add in this. That cuts it out a bunch, so we're here. And then we cut out the X's, and we're here now. And then we'll cut out the negative Y's, and we're in this region right there. That is my feasible region, so I want you to get a quick sketch of that. So you'll obviously find this over a little bit, and let's get a quick sketch of this. We have one that goes like this. We have one that goes like this. We have one that goes like this. And then we have another one that goes like that. And obviously this right here. Is my shaded region. That's my feasible region. Now what do we need to do? 
find those critical points right here, right here, right here, right here, right there. Those are my critical points. I should have a total of five of them, if I'm not mistaken here. Now what we need to do is find out exactly which, what those points are. So we'll go up here and click here. One of them is 0, 5. We have 0, 4. We have 1, 2, 0, 3, or 3, 0, and 5, 0. So we have 0, 5, 0, 4, We have one, two, we have three, zero, and we have five, zero. Now, we've got all that down. We don't need Desmos right now. We're just going to finish this off. These are my critical points. These are the solutions, the possible solutions to this particular application problem. Either I'm going to order 0 ounces of x, 4 ounces of y, 0 ounces of x, 5 ounces of y, 1 ounce of x, 2 ounces of y, 3 ounces of x, 0 ounces of y, or 5 ounces of x, 0 ounces of y. Now, we've got to find out which one is cheapest. So, we plug that back into what? Put it back into your cost. To find the cheapest cost, we must plug it into a cost function. So how much does it cost? For 0 ounces of x, 4 ounces of y. For that blend. $1.20. What about 0 ounces of x, 5 ounces of y? About 50 What about uh, three ounces or one ounce of X, two ounces of Y? Eighty cents. Eighty cents. What about three ounces of X, zero ounces of Y? Sixty cents. And what about five ounces of X, zero ounces of Y? What is the optimal blend? Right here. 3 ounces of X, 0 ounces of Y. So, to make the optimal blend, we must mix 3 ounces of food X with zero ounces of food Y, or just simply say you must use three ounces of X. Y for a min cost of 60 cents per blend. Something to that effect is what I want to see and write. Shows me you understand what that answer actually means in terms of the problem that uh, you're given here in number five. That's what I would expect to see for number five. A lot of stuff there, a lot of constraints that we have placed upon that objective function. But given those situations, that is the, is the best decision that we can make. Okay. Number nine. Go for number nine. All right, number nine is the TV ad one, if I'm not mistaken. It says, a marketing manager is coordinating an ad campaign. TV ads are $2,000 and reach 10,000 people. And radio ads are $500 to reach 5,000 people. The target size of audience for this marketing campaign is at least 100,000 people. 
He wants to buy no more than 10 TV ads and no more than 15 radio ads. How can the marketing manager minimize his costs within these constraints or conditions? So, number nine, how do we start this problem? Find your own numbers. Okay, what's x going to equal in number nine? Number of TV ads. Yes. x is going to equal number of TV ads. Right. What's y going to equal? Number of radio ads. All right. What's my objective function? Well, what is it going to be? What is it? Profit. Mm, are you sure about that? It's going to be a cost. They want you trying, what does it say in the last sentence there? Uh, how can the marketing manager minimize his cost within these conditions? So it will be a cost function. And what is the cost function equal to? <coughs> Thousand x plus five hundred y. Plus five hundred what? $2,000 for every TV ad, $500 for every radio ad, and we want to minimize costs but still stay within these constraints. Now, what constraints are we given here or to work with? What totals do we have here of these constraints? 100000 100, and that is the total number of people that must be reached. Now, what is the inequality sign going to be for this 100,000? Less than or greater than or equal to. I've heard both. Can you go over the 100,000? Yes. Can you go under it? Can it be equal to it? Yes. We want to reach at least 100,000, so it needs to be greater than or equal to 100,000. That's way now, what makes that one up? The 10,000 10, 10, 10, 10, X plus 5,000 Y. All right, what other constraints do we have here? Uh, X is less than or equal to 10. So X has to be less than or equal to 10. Is there any other constraints on that x? It's got to be greater than or equal to 0, too, but less than or equal to 10. Correct? You can't have a negative amount of TV ads here, and I certainly don't want to have any more than 10. Now, what about your y? Is there restrictions on your y's? What is it? And what else? Y is greater than equal to zero. These right here are my constraints. I have no other constraints. There's really no other information. So let's put that into Desmos now and see what we get. So obviously you might have to X out of everything here, reset it just in case. Now, we type in 10,000. No commas or anything. X plus 5,000 Y has to be greater than or equal to 100,000. And then we have our other ones. X must be uh, greater than or equal to zero. X must be less than or equal to 10. And then we have y must be greater than or equal to 0. And y must be less than or equal to 15. Now, if we zoom out. We just need to make sure where that feasible region lies so that we can determine those possible solutions, critical points. Kitty McCoy, stop playing Ian. So we go one by one. That one is above. We'll hover to tell right now. Move it over here. Now we add in the second inequality. 
That cuts off all of the negative x's. So now we're dealing with this region right here. And then we take the next one, which means that x has to be less than or equal to 10. And now we're limited to this. And then we add in x is, uh, y is greater than 0, so we're right here. And then we add in our last constraint here. And it cuts off that and this this top right here portion, and that's my feasible region. So we've got to get a quick sketch of this. Over here, obviously dealing with the positive x and positive y quadrant. We have this right here. We have this right here. We have this right here, and my shaded regions right here. Now we just got to find those critical points. I found that feasible region. We have one right here, one right here, and one right there. So go ahead and click on those and get those points. And we have what now? 2.5 comma 15. We have 10 comma 15. And we have 10 comma 0. Now, do we have decimals in these? One of them does. Can we have, now again, they're not going to just make, they're not just going to make different TVF. You make one TVF. Can you have a fraction of a TVF? No. It won't, it won't reach as many people. It won't, it won't, there won't be a point to it. Yeah, can you make a 30 second TVF instead of a minute? Yeah, but that costs more money, right? And we're not going to do that. So they're only making one TVF. So that means, what do we have to round this to? You must round it to three. If you're in doubt, just go over into Desmos, Plug in the coordinate point, 3, 15, and then see if it falls in that feasible region. If we zoom in. There it is right there on that line, which includes that point, right? Because it's a solid line, so therefore it includes that point, which means it is in the feasible region. So that means I need to change this to 3, 5, 3 15 instead of 2.515. Now that I have those, what do I do with this? Plug them back in and determine the cost for each of these. We want to get the minimum cost. What is the cost if I have three TV ads? And 15 radio ads. 13,500. 13, what about if I have 10 TV and 15 radio? 20,000. 20 what? 27,000. Oh, yeah, yeah. 27,000. 7, yeah. 500. 500. Right? And what do I get when I have 10 TV ads and zero radio? 20,000. Yep. All right, what is the optimal solution here? Three TV ads and 15 radio ads. We'll stay within these constraints and be the cheapest that we can have. So to minimize costs, they must Produce three TV ads and 15 radio ads for a min cost of $13,500. Something to that effect is sufficient enough. Does that make sense? 
All right. Now, you said you had a question on 10, correct? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go through that one. Now, there's a lot to this one. But break it down part by part, and we'll get through it. So let's go back to here. I'll erase this. Let's talk about number 10. After that, if you haven't finished this, you need to finish this. We're going to get the next assignment. We'll do a little bit of it, and then we'll kind of see where we are with that at the end. All right, so number 10. It says, the calculator company produces scientific calculators and graphing calculators. Long-term projections indicate that expected demand of at least 100 scientific and 80 graphing calculators each day will be needed. Because of limitations on production capacity, no more than 200 calcu scientific calculators and 170 graphing calculators can be made daily. To satisfy a shipping contract, a total of at least 200 calculators overall must be shipped each day. If the scientific calculators results in a $2 loss, but the graphing calculators produces a $5 profit, how many of each type should be made to maximize net profits? So we're dealing with number 10 here. How do we start this? That? Okay. What are what's one of my unknowns? And then the other one's what? Yeah, number of scientific calculators and number of graphing calculators. Okay. Now, my objective function is to do what? my objective function here. Maximize profit. So I'll be dealing with a profit function. And what is my profit function equivalent to? Minus 2x plus 5y. Yes. Minus 2x plus 5y. $2 loss for every x, $5 gain for every y. Now obviously, trying to make max profits, you'd say, oh, do I really need to make scientific calculators because uh, well, they lose money on it, but the problem is there is a demand for that, so that we have to produce. So we're trying to make that nice, even keel decision here, what will be best for us in this situation. Now, step three is establish your unknown. No, sorry, uh, create your constraints. So what constraints do I have here? Do I have totals that will help me arrive at these constraints? What's that? 200. Okay, what is that a total of here? Okay, that means I have to have what? At least? No more than 200 scientific calculators. So what does that mean? That scientific calculators is X, right? So it needs to be less than or equal to. X is less than or equal to that, correct? Okay, what else? Okay, that's the number of what? Graphing calculators, right? What is it? It's the what now? 170. No more than 170 can be produced in one day. So what does that give me for my Y? Very good. What else am I working with here that's holding me back from making as much money as possible? Two hundred calculators must be shipped. Two hundred calculators must be shipped every day. So two hundred. Now, can more than two hundred be shipped? Yes. Yeah. Can under two hundred be shipped? No. Can equal to two hundred be shipped? All right. So what does this need to be? Plus. What? The number of calculators shipped is less than 200? No, what would it be? Greater than or equal to 200. 
Any, and what is the inequality that goes with that? X plus Y. Number of scientific, number of graphing, gives me the total number I'm sh I have to ship. I quote for the day. Now, are there any other constraints here? Okay, let's write that down. We know that is true. Are there any other constraints here? Something we're missing here. Oh, at least 100. Do we have a Do we have a quota each day of how many we have to make of each at least? We have we know we have to ship 200 every day. But isn't there a quota on how many I need to make of each every day? Yep. Okay, so what does that say? It says expected demand at least 100 scientific and 80 graphing calculators must be produced each day, right? So, how does that change this? X. X is what? Greater than or equal to 100. Greater than or equal to 100. And what else? Y is greater than or equal to 80. Now, if x is greater than or equal to 0, what does that mean for this right here? If x has to be greater than or equal to 100, sorry, what does that mean for this x is greater than or equal to 0? It's kind of irrelevant in this particular case because x already has a restriction that has to be greater than 100 but less than 200, right? Same thing here with the y. y has to be greater than or equal to 80, but less than or equal to 170. So y being greater than or equal to 0 is irrelevant, because it needs to be more than just 0. It needs to be at least 80, or it needs to be at least 100. So in this particular case, these right here outweigh these, and therefore I don't even really need them. So now what we got to do is do what? Plug it into Desmos. So go back to Desmos. Find this solution region, this feasible region here, so that we can finish this problem off. So here we go. We have uh, we said x needs to be less than or equal to 200. Y needs to be less than or equal to 170. We said X plus Y has to be equivalent to, uh, well, it's not equivalent to, but uh, greater than or equal to 200. We also said that X has to be less than or equal to 100. I'm sorry. Greater than or equal to 100, right? Because we have to have at least 100 made and less than 200 made. And then y is greater than or equal to 80. We have to have at least 80 produced every day to meet our quota. Now, with all of those established, let's zoom out and see what we can find. Now, where is this shaded region, the solution region? Take it all out. If you can't locate it, and go one by one. This one is to the left of that line. This one is below that line. This one is up in this region right there. And this one cuts that little left corner off. So now we're dealing with this. And then we have the last one, which then cuts off the bottom triangle right here, and we have this. That's my feasible region. So now click on the points and get a quick sketch. Sketch of this. So we have 
have something to the effect of points that bound this feasible region. And these are your possible solutions. So we have 100, 170, 100 scientific, 170 graphic. Or we could go 200 scientific, 170 graphic. Or we could do 200 scientific, 80 graphic. Last one here, actually there's, there's two more here, right? Yeah, two more here. We have this, and then I messed up here, there's another one here. We have that. Here. And this one right here is what? This one is what again? 100, 100, right? Okay. So 100, 100. Oh, that's the top one here. And then this one right here is what? 128. Guys, okay. so this one right here is 128. All right, so. We've gotten all that. Now we need to do what with all of these critical points? Plug them into a process. Plug them in and see what I'm going to need to produce here. Do I need to produce 100 scientific, 170 graphing? Do I need to produce 200 scientific, 170 graphing? Do I need to produce 100 scientific, 100 graphing? Or do I need to produce 120 scientific, 80 graphing? Or do I need to produce 200 scientific, 80 graphic? Which one will give us the most profit in this particular problem? So, what do I get when I do 100 graphing or 100 scientific, 170 graphing? What do I get? 650. 650 is my profit. What about 200 and 170? 450 is my problem. What if I do 200 uh, or 100, 100? Three what? 300. What if I do 120 and 80? 160. And what if I do 280? 500. What is it? Well, that would be negative 400, right? And positive 400, right? Which would be zero dollars. So if I produce that, I wouldn't make anything. Correct? Nope. Now, which one is the, the best option we have here? Right there. And we say to maximize profits. We must produce 100 scientific calculators 100 and 170 graphing calculators for a max profit of $650. That's how you would do that one there. Any questions? Alright. If you haven't finished this, I want you to finish that. If you have finished it, we're going to move on to the next one. You've got to go get it. I made copies, so I'll go get it. So finish up what you're working on right now, and we will. Um,
Yes, turn it in. You're done with it. And we will move on to the next one. All right. I'll come around and answer any questions while we work the rest of the period.